Hi guys, slightly different filming location today, currently on holiday in Split. So unfortunately I didn't make it to Borough v QPR. I instead went to Hajuk Split, which was absolutely insane. This was the atmosphere at Nil Nil. And I must be a bit of a bad luck charm to be honest, because Split have won every game so far, they're top of the league. Of course they lost 1-0 in the 101st minute. Sorry about that split. Anyway, of course, QPR won 2-0 at Borough on Saturday. Massive win, really happy with the result. So I thought I'd do a video of my thoughts. Going into the match, quite surprisingly, Borough have had a pretty poor start to the season. They actually have the worst league form in the country. Quite surprised given they made the playoffs last season. They looked brilliant under Michael Carrick. They did taper off a bit towards the end of the season. I think the last four games, including the two semis, they didn't win. The loss of players like Akpom, obviously he was the league highest goal scorer last season. Loney's like Cameron Archer, they're looking to be a real loss for them so far. They are conceding a lot of goals. They haven't won a game yet. They had the one all draw against Huddersfield, but they have won two games in the cup, uh, one being against Huddersfield again. Made a fair few summer signings, the key addition being Seni Dieng in goal. That's the second QPR keeper they've signed in the last three, four years, obviously following on from Joe Lumley. Don't think they were too impressed with him. And based on initial showings, it looks like it's the same for Seni. Of course, QPR were going into the match off the back of two losses. The 1-0 home loss at Ipswich and 2-1 away at Southampton last weekend. Obviously, much improved performances against what we saw at Watford on the first day of the season. Really reassuring for some people. My big thing is we weren't really able to end matches that well from the 60, 70 minute. We've been tapering off a lot. So that's where I was hoping to see some improvement. We had an unchanged start in 11. And to be honest, whether that's through design or necessity, I think is actually a really positive thing. Good teams in all leagues tend to keep the same starting lineup match to match, only making changes for injuries. And I think it's gonna bring a lot more cohesion to this side. So I think having a settled, consistent side is gonna do us some good. Chair, of course, was nearly off on deadline day. There's talks that Leicester were very much interested, but it didn't quite work with their ingoings and outgoings. And then Leeds emerged with a late bid, but it was too late on deadline day. We wouldn't have had time for a replacement, and so we didn't sell him. Paul Smith forced a really early save from Seni Dieng. He turned his defender on the edge of the box, made a nice incisive run, and put a shot across goal. Seni got a hand to it. I'm sure nearly could have touched the loose ball in, so that was a shame. Borough themselves had a few close chances. There were actually two chances that came from through balls, which completely took our defence off guard. And actually, that's how Southampton scored both of their goals via Ryan Manning last weekend. So it seems we're struggling with these low cutting balls into the box. Emmanuel Letlaf, which is Borough's new striker signed in August, his first shot was saved by Begovic at the near post and then cleared out of the box by Morgan Fox. A near identical through ball to Laff once again forced another save from Begovic, this time with his feet. Some really good blocks from him, especially after last week, I thought the first Southampton goal was quite soft and should have been saved. So really good to see him putting in a good performance. Later in the half, Paul Smith made another darting run from a long ball from field, again cutting into the box, this time having his shot blocked by the defence. But that following ball then fell to QPR in midfield just outside the box. Chair made a short pass to Dizel, he got his foot rooted and he unleashed an absolute screamer. Top left, in off the post, Seni Dieng rooted to the spot. Nice to see that for another team and not us for a change. Sorry, Seni. And there was nothing he could do about it. There was nothing any goalkeeper could do about it. It was absolutely perfect shot. What a way to score your first QPR goal. Many QPR fans have thought his performances have improved lately and you know, he's finally been rewarded with a goal and I hope he can continue to do that and build on this now. I think him playing a little bit further forward suits him a lot better. Obviously, we've now got Cole back and Field next to each other, so they're allowing him a little bit more creative freedom. Ainsworth's talked about the improvements he's made, so I'm really hoping he can push on from here. Borough had a couple of efforts towards the end of the half. Smith conceded a free kick just outside the box. The ball was played into the box, but the header was saved once again by Begovic, who was having a brilliant match. Before the end of the half, Steve Cook did go down with a groin injury. He came off a Jake Clark Salter, but it does look like that's only a minor injury. He since said on Twitter that he'll see us in a few weeks after the international break. So I don't think anything too big to worry about there. Borough opened the second half exactly as they had in the first half. These tight little through balls just through to laugh, forcing another save from Begovic. But he handled it well, and otherwise we seem to be holding up really well. Jake Clark's Holt obviously playing his first league football of this campaign, and he looked really good too. If he can stay fit, he is a great defender, so I really hope that this is only a minor setback. Borough continued to have chances. Later in the half, they broke from a QPR corner. There was two of them on the counter, then three on the counter. But the squared ball played on the edge of the box was brilliantly broken up by Morgan Fox. He was the only defender back and he completely broke up the chance. And from that, we were instantly on the counter. A long ball played out to Armstrong. He cut into the borough box, but his shot was blocked at the near post by Senny Dieng. The fact that we've got Smith and Armstrong in the side, 
we actually have one thing which we've not had for years, which is pace. We probably haven't had it since the say Samuel left the club. It allows us to counter in this way, and it's so integral to the way that Ainsworth is playing football with QPR. We continue to have our share of chances, and later in the half, Paul Smith found himself on the edge of the box. He had two free defenders around him. He neatly took the ball around all of them, cut into the box. His cross was blocked by a Borough defender, but fell to chair. His shot was blocked, but that fell to Jack Colback, and he rifled it into the top left corner for his second goal in two games for QPR. Again, I've talked about the fact that we're getting a lot more players into the box, and this has finally come off. To be honest, Jack Colback being our sort of Stefan Johansson replacement, he's brought two things in that Johansson didn't have last season. A, he could play back-to-back -back matches, and B, he's scoring goals, which we haven't had a goal scorer in midfielder in a long time. So 2-0 with 20 minutes to go, plus added time. As said earlier we've normally been fading at this point in games but we held on really well here armstrong made way for collie he got some more minutes under his belt Dizel for duke mckenna on 85 minutes chair for willock but we held on we saw the game out 2-0 for our second win of the season a clean sheet away from home really really good result got to say fair play to ainsworth and the players i think tactically ainsworth got it spot on he seems to have found a system which is getting the best out of what is a fairly limited squad. The back three with Kakai as the right centre-back is working quite well. Morgan Fox obviously in his natural position as the left centre-back. Smith in games like this where he doesn't have to do quite as much defending, he can play as that high wing-back, suits him to a tee. I thought he looked brilliant on Saturday. And generally speaking, despite not getting the number of additions that we all felt that we needed, the signings that Ainsworth has made over the summer have all pretty much hit the ground running. Begovic and Fox have come on leaps and bounds from the Watford game. Obviously Fox has been played out of position anyway, so you can give him an excuse there. Steve Cook, has shored up that defence really, really well. Paul Smith, as I say, he's looking like a proper player now. Jack Colback, two goals for him in two starts. One thing I also noticed is that our possession was actually up from last week. So at Southampton, we had 26% possession. On Saturday, we had 38% possession, which is the joint highest that we've had this season. And while it probably sounds like a small number, in previous matches, we have struggled when teams have sustained possession. And that's normally where we sort of start to crack under pressure. For me, the amount of possession increasing would have just helped us cope with that pressure a little bit better. And I think it really showed on Saturday. 38 to 45% possession is much more in the realms where I'd be happy with for sort of counter-attacking football. I think that's a really good sign that we managed to keep the ball a little bit more. Obviously, Borough have been in pretty poor form and that's obviously continued on Saturday. Those are the teams that we normally don't beat. And coming off of the back of two performances where we should have at least got a point in each, I'm really pleased that we're able to actually get a win out of this. And I think that's going to do a lot for confidence. We've now got two successive home games after the international break. Sunderland and Swansea. Obviously these are going to be trickier games for us but hopefully this is going to give the players confidence and it's time to start turning that home form which has been poor for so long into hopefully good form. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any thoughts yourself please do let me know in the comments. I'll reply to everything. If you've enjoyed the video then please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time. Cheers!